Last Monday, I launched the first of many lightning round videos where I attempt to answer all the questions that were asked when I announced the lightning round video, and I got so many that it's a whole series of them now. First one was last week. Here's a second one. Let's do this. Ross Soaring for You asks, what's the fin on the second stage of the BFR and do you think it will meet its targeted 2019 test date? So it's not really a fin, it's more of a flare on, on both sides that helps it to re-enter the atmosphere. And I also think I read somewhere that uh, NASA insisted on this for some reason, like Elon wasn't planning on doing it, but NASA insisted. Seems like I read that, I could be wrong. And as for whether they'll meet their date, it looks like from what I've read, they're actually ahead of schedule, if anything. Um, one of the big reasons why them launching the Falcon 9 Block 5 was such a big idea or such a big deal is that uh, they're not going to be doing any more like research and development on the Falcon 9. That is the, the end stage of the Falcon 9. They're not going to be updating that anymore. So all the research and development now is going to be going into the BFR. So yeah, it's, it's moving forward. It's exciting. Carlos Savina asks, what are my thoughts on Fortnite? Yeah, I'm not a gamer. I actually had to look up what Fortnite was, but since I have absolutely no context, I have no thoughts. Dan Kassar4 asks, can you say fee fi fo fum fo -fer? I guess I can. C. Lindsay 2 asks, how are your teeth doing? Yeah, I talked about this a little bit on my second channel. I have some of the worst teeth in the world. I have actually lost count of all the root canals that I've had. That's at least four, maybe five, possibly six. And I recently had to have a filling done on that tooth right there, this front tooth, that uh, the, the, it got infected, impacted, abscessed, and they had to go in and do a root canal on that. And it's doing better. It still hurts a little bit when I bite down on something hard, but, um, yeah, it, this, I've always hated this tooth. It's the most crooked tooth in my mouth. I kind of wish they just yanked it out and started over. Lyle Hamilton asked, if time were paused, would gravity still work? If time were paused, I think few things would work. Strawberry Cherry asked, favorite type of cheese? I'm really not much of a cheese guy, uh, cheesy as I may be, but um, I will say I went to France a few years ago and the cheese there was delicious. The Real Chris Cruz asked, have you heard of the theory of conformal cyclic cosmology or CCC? What are your thoughts on its implications? Many scientists of different pedigrees have been collaborating and peer reviewing this one. I only came across it perhaps a month ago. I honestly hadn't heard of this before, but in my 10 minutes of research that I've been able to apply to it, it says that the universe iterates through infinite cycles with the future time-like infinity of each previous iteration being identified with the Big Bang singularity of the next. Uh, so it sounds like an infinite series of Big Bangs creating other universes one after another. Um, it was proposed by Roger Penrose, who has a great reputation in a book called Cycles of Time. Uh, yeah, no, I'll have to check it out. Thanks for suggesting that. Raul K, what are your thoughts before the Big Bang? I had no thoughts before the Big Bang. Nobody did. Hakatan52, what do you think we will find on Europa? Lots of ice. Prasaman Kumar asked, are we living in a simulation or am I a simulation? I talked about this in the previous video. Um, it's on the list of possibilities. Wavy Davy asks, do you think it would be possible to go to Mars after the Apollo program ended if we hadn't started the shuttle program? I think it's kind of the opposite. I think the public interest and the funding for NASA went down, so instead of going to Mars, we went with the shuttle program. Kabuff Spotter asks, could the Minuteman rocket boosters be used to send payloads like satellites into space? I'm not an expert on the Minuteman rocket, so I can't like look at the stats and give you any answers on that, but there is something of a trend of smaller rockets la launching smaller like CubeSat payloads into space. Rocket Labs is doing that right now. and. Uh, JAXA, I believe, last year launched the smallest rocket, was the smallest orbital rocket to space ever, so possibly. Silbert J asks, lived experience, perceptions, thoughts, emotions, in short, conscious awareness, is of a different order of discourse than, say, the physical neural correlates of experience. How do you square this with the current understandings of the universe? For the most part, contemporary cosmologists don't even pose the question. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're asking here. How do the physical processes that create our consciousness relate to our current understandings of the universe? Uh, those seem like two different things to me. Jonah Cat 25 if someone offered you a ticket in the Virgin Galactic ship VSS Unity, would you take it? I wouldn't be on the first launch, but yeah, once it's got a track record, sure. Zavin Zakaria asks, can you do a video about futuristic batteries or the future of batteries? I don't know. I did a video a while back on supercapacitors and apparently there's a really hardcore battery community out there that I still get hate mail for that one. So yeah. Blake and Gouda asks, have you ever dealt with imposter syndrome when talking about these complex topics in your videos? If so, how did you get over it if you ever did? Uh, yeah, imposter syndrome, I am 98% imposter syndrome. My body is made up of 98% imposter syndrome. Yes. For anybody confused, imposter syndrome is this psychological thing where people sort of doubt their accomplishments and are always worried that they're going to be found out to be a fraud. And yeah, I, I feel like that all the time. Mostly because I'm a giant fraud. 
Like when I look at my subscriber count, I don't think, you know, yeah, I'm a genius, I'm, I'm amazing. But I do think I worked my ass off for that. You know, I, I run a channel where I talk about science topics, often very high level and complex science topics, but I actually have a background as a filmmaker and a humorist. And I just kind of stumbled into this world. So as you can tell in this video and, and the previous video, people ask me questions all the time that I never, about things that I've never heard of. Uh, but I have time to research it and, and study it and, and you know put together a video about it. But when people ask me in a live stream or in person, I don't have this information right off the top of my head. And it really makes me feel like a fraud because I think that people have decided that I'm the type of person that would have that kind of information right off the top of my head. And I just don't. You know, that, that may be why I've, to this point, avoided doing meetups and I even shy away from doing live streams because I, I feel like I'm not living up to the expectation that the people have of me. So yeah, I, I have a lot of imposter syndrome. Thanks for the therapy session. Alex McDonald Smith asked, one, fungal and plant intelligence, two, ayahuasca, psilocybin, DMT, and the possibility of seeing into other realities with psychedelics. Gonna do a video on either topic? Uh, I have done a video on psychedelics in the past. Uh, you can go look it up on my channel. I might do another one again at some point. But I love the experiment where they took like a, a petri dish in the shape of the United States and they put uh, f sources of food in all the major cities. And then they put a slime mold in there and watched what happened. And basically the slime mold created the United States interstate highway system. This thing without a brain <laughs> created this very complex network of roads, exactly the same way we did. That's fascinating to me. Now, Hal Mahmood asked, what do you think of asteroid mining? Let's do it. Sarah 98 asked, favorite space movie? So please keep in mind whenever somebody asks me what's my favorite song, what's my favorite movie, my favorite color, whatever, A, that changes all the time for me. And B, uh, just because it's my favorite doesn't mean that I think it's the best movie ever made. It's just my favorite one to watch. So to answer that question, my favorite space movie is Galaxy Quest. In fact, a quick story. I was at the Austin Film Festival uh, one year and Mark Johnson, who produced Galaxy Quest, was doing a panel and he had just produced uh, Breaking Bad. So everybody was asking about Breaking Bad. So while he was up there, I, I got on a IMDB on my phone and I looked it up and he, he has produced I mean, you name it, he's produced it, going all the way back to the 80s. He produced Overboard with Goldie Hawn way the hell back when. So uh, this guy has this huge pedigree. One of his films was uh, Galaxy Quest. So after the panel, all these people were lining up to talk to him, and I got in line. And of course, everybody was asking about Breaking Bad because that had just ended. And uh, I got up there, and I was like, so I know everybody's asking about Breaking Bad, but I just want to say I think Galaxy Quest is the most underrated film ever made. And he actually like laughed quite a bit and he said, you know what? He said, in all my years, there are maybe three or four scripts that have ever landed on my desk that required no revisions whatsoever that was just perfect. And that was one of them. So that made me feel pretty good. J.O. Calero asked, if two objects fly away from each other in opposite directions at the speed of light, are they moving at twice the speed of light relative to each other? I know that the speed of light is the limit, but how would this work? Well, relative to each other, I'll say, yeah. I'm gonna hear about that in the comments. The Sith Joe asked, what do you think of new atheism, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, etc.? I'm guessing this is about the trend of, of people incorporating a spiritual experience into a non-religious construct, sort of like uh, you don't need an omnipresent deity to still take in the wonder of the world and be amazed by just the unbelievable nature of existence. And I think that's a good thing. I think we need to be reminded from time to time how incredibly improbable and amazing existence is. Demon Rising asks, can synthetic cells and original cells coexist without rejection? They'll need to. Toasty Bass asks, what books are you reading at the moment? What's on your reading list? I'm trying to alternate between nonfiction and fiction books. What's up next right now is Artemis by Andy Weir, and um, I still need to read a book on biocentrism. Meeves asks, Joe, you rock. What do you think will be the most amazing unexpected discovery from the James Webb Space Telescope? Like the Hubble Deep Field discovery. Well, if it's gonna be unexpected, how can I expect it? I think we may uh, get some surprises about the way stars were formed in the early universe and maybe get a better idea of just how this whole thing started. That's kind of the point. Della Lindsay Art asked, Hi Joe, can you do a video on what scientists call the axis of evil pertaining to the CMB in a way that we can all understand it? Yeah, so I actually just uh, found out about this myself, looked it up, and it's, it is way too much to really describe just in this video. But it basically, there's a few different types of measurements that scientists have done on the CMB that have all kind of lined up in really weird ways that make us look like we have sort of a privileged position in the universe. 
Now that could just be an amazing coincidence or it might be a sign of some deeper thing, obviously. Uh, there's, there's a big debate there. Thatcher McCauley asked, what impact will the future integration of the man-machine interface, improved prosthetics, nanobots, etc., have on professional sports? We've already seen a double amputee, Oscar Pistorius, compete with prosthetics at the Olympic level with other top-level athletes. Will one day people be cutting off their legs so that they can get prosthetics to make them run faster, jump higher, etc.? There's a weird part of me that really hopes so. Jacob Weston asks, what do you think about phone and Wi-Fi radiation? Do you think it could have long-term health effects, and are you at all concerned about 5G? I'm not overly concerned about it, but I do tend to talk with my phone on speaker mostly these days. Crunchy Kimber asks, hey Joe, as quantum computers and blockchain are both progressing, what can we expect from their interaction? What other developments can we expect? How far do you think we are from massive AI optimization from quantum computers? What kind of problems will be the most likely to be solved by this? What's the most exciting thing to you right now? What part of one question don't you understand? So neural networks and machine learning seem to be way ahead of quantum computing right now, and I don't know if these two things have anything to do with each other or if they would work together in any way, but if machine learning occurs by them running scenarios over and over and over again until they get the right one, and quantum computing makes it possible to explore you know, multiple options at once, thousands upon thousands at once, then maybe one could complement the other and boost the machine learning capability of AI. It's an interesting concept, we'll have to see. Brutalarius asks, which film would you wish it was you, the director? So when I was a kid, I was a huge fan of Phantom of the Opera. Of course, I had never been able to see it because I was nowhere near a place where you could actually watch it, but I had the original cast recording on, on the, uh, CD and I listened to it all the time. And I had to just kind of imagine it in my head, what it would be like. And of course, me wanting to be a filmmaker, I had all these plans laid out and just like, I had this perfectly like laid out in my head exactly how I wanted to do it. And then they made the movie version of it and I was majorly disappointed. Joey Doomsday SFD asked, what's the latest cutting edge medical breakthroughs in cancer research? This one hits home to many of us. I don't know how cutting edge this is anymore, but what I'm hearing about immunotherapy treatments and using like viruses, mutated viruses to go in and wipe out cancer cells, that seems very promising to me. Donzen Bergen asked, hi Joe, why do we make houses in Holland out of concrete and you make them in the US out of wood? I don't know, you make shoes out of wood and we make shoes out of concrete. At least the mafia does. Manuel R. Lofgren asked, I really liked your Falcon Heavy live stream in February and was just wondering if you will watch the test flight of BFR at the Cape with your own eyes. Actually, I want to watch it with somebody else's eyes. No, that would be amazing. Uh, who knows what my situation will be there at the time. Will Daniel 19 asked, how do you balance having fun and studying in college? I was about as broke as a human being could be in college, so that kind of cut down on the fun. <sighs> Youth is wasted on the young. Adam Hilera asked, I've always wondered if you dig a tunnel that runs around the equator, uses a very strong binoculars and put up mirrors so that the light protrudes all the time. Can I see my own back? What? I don't, dude, I, how, take that to Vsauce. Mm, Apocalypse asked, once you're born, are you living or dying? Everything is life, even death. The MT set asked, would you accept the future run by AI or would you fight it? In a way, the world is already run by AI because AIs are what basically control the stock market these days. So I guess I'm already accepting it. And so are you. Killacat asks, what happens when we run out of fossil fuel? I think we know. Shino Casino asked, how tall are you? In centimeters, please. I'm 3.8 cubits. Figure it out. Patterson F asked, hi Joe, are you an advocate for cloud computing? Uh, no. Should I be? Claire Vanderick asked, hey Joe, can you explain what scientific conditions make life possible? Why and in what range these conditions should be present? And based on these givens, how many plants are expected to sustain any form of life and in what forms? The reason this is such a hard question to answer is that we only have a sample size of one. All the life that we know was created on this planet with this specific combination of environmental factors, a large moon, a strong magnetic field, plate tectonics, we're the only planet that we know of that has water in all three states, and this very specific atmospheric pressure. If we find a planet that has all those specific things, it would be a great start but whether or not it requires those specific things for life to happen, we don't know. Emily Noof Art asks, what would happen if the Earth suddenly stopped rotating? You would suddenly be flung at the closest wall at 1600 kilometers per hour. It would be bad. Trill Johansson asks, what's your favorite type of music? I think I'm officially getting old because the only type of music that I like is from at least 10 years ago. The Artistic Dreamer asks, would you really want immortality? I just want to be able to check out when I want to check out and not a minute sooner. Mrs. Cullivan asked, your country of choice, Ireland or England? You know, for years, 
in years and years, I thought that I was like a quarter Irish, so I kind of identified with that. Like I really made uh, St. Patrick's Day into a big deal. Like I really, you know, had this like Irish pride and everything. And then I found out my, my mother did this whole genealogy thing. And it turns out all of my ancestors are from here like before the Civil War. So I'm basically just an American mud. I've actually been to England. I really liked it there, but I've never quite made it to Ireland. So I can't really make a comparison. Harold Arthur asked, how does DNA actually work? Which mechanisms read the code and carry out the instructions? That uh, can't be explained in one video. Much like your Facebook status, it's complicated. But here's my best shot. Along the DNA sequence, along the spine, there are these nucleotides, G, T, C, and A. And there are billions of them. And groups of three nucleotides are called codons. And you can think of each one of those codons as a specific lock. And only a specific amino acid will connect to that lock. So when you have these groups of three going down and these amino acids sort of form right next to it, they connect to those different locks in these codons. And by doing so, they then connect with each other and these amino acids then form this long chain, which creates a protein. And these proteins go out and carry out the functions of the cell. Jim Kell Photography asks, is there any plant that's expected to hold life? Don't all plants hold life? But I'm sure you meant planet and um, there's I can't say that we expect any of them so far to have life, although there are some out there that look pretty promising. Josh Stuff asked, I missed your 15 minutes of fame, so I can't judge your British accent, but what movies or TV have you worked on? Yeah, that was from uh, a Johnny Depp sort of true Hollywood story thing that I played a, a British doctor in a recreation of a scene. Uh, I did finally get to see it. It's, it's pretty bad. But now I did Oceanfront Property. I actually wrote a film called Unlimited. Um, I actually did a lot of paid screenwriting work for um, about five or six years there. Most of it was script doctoring and it was uncredited, so I can't really point to a lot of films out there that you might have seen. You know, my, my name doesn't show up in any IMDb credits for it, unfortunately. I've learned that getting a credit is more important than getting the money, although the money is what got me to be able to get this house, so that, that's a good thing. It's the Mind asks, what is the most difficult topic you are having problems to deal in one of your video? Uh, reading that question. Michael Colgrove asks, on a scale of red to nihilism, how much do you love pineapple? I actually do really love pineapple, but I think you may have just had a stroke. Misty Dargan asks, did you go to college? If so, what did you major in? I uh, went to the University of North Texas, go Eagles, and majored in radio TV film, minor in advertising. Boo Chadley 24 asks, dear Joe, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I've been asked that before. Will's Talk 29, as we move further away from fossil fuels, which energy production system would you bank on for our future if current technology? If not current, what future tech? Well, a lot of people are banking on renewables, which I think we should be doing, but I also think we need to be paying more attention to nuclear, considering some of the newer nuclear technologies out there. Obviously, fusion would be the holy grail, and uh, it'll be exciting to see what happens on that front. Just Don't Talk To Me 1 asks, do you ever question what you're doing with your life and if you could be doing something better, or is that just me? Oh no, you're far from the only person that questions what I'm doing with my life. Cheyenne DeSiki asked, is Newton's third law of motion false? If so, why haven't we come up with a better model so far? What role does the understanding of gravity play here? I don't think it's false until you get down to quantum scales. Astro Allen asks, SpaceX or Blue Origin? No, either or both is allowed. He just listed two companies and put a question mark behind them. What about them? There are two companies with very different goals and they're both pursuing those goals and I think they will both uh, get there. So it's them, there's Rocket Lab, ESA, ISRO, uh, Bigelow Aerospace, ULA, there's a whole ton of them out there now. This is a whole new space race. It's not a horse race. Paiush Photos asks, do you believe in cosmic consciousness? Explain. I like the idea of it. Model Builder Lawler asks, do you fear that populistic politicians will hold back or make hard for scientific progress? Not really. There's, there's a lot of other factors that go into pushing progress forward besides the, the pendulum always swings when it comes to politics. Don Archangel asks, if an object traveling near the speed of light travels towards a black hole, will gravity stop accelerating it when it hits light speed? If I understand correctly, an object can never actually reach light speed because it has mass, so I'm going to say no. Mistra 15 asks, Dear Joe, can you cover the topic on wormholes? Uh, not in a lightning round video. 
Actually, believe it or not, all those questions just came from Instagram. So the next one, it looks like I'll probably be covering the ones from Facebook. But I want to thank everybody who asked questions on any of the platforms, but this one specifically for my Instagram followers out there. I appreciate you guys. Obviously, if you are not following me on Instagram, you can follow me at Answers with Joe on there. And if you haven't had a chance, check out some of the Answers with Joe branded t-shirts. They're really cool. I'm really excited about them. You can go to get some of your own at AnswersWithJoe.com slash shirts. More lightning round videos on the way. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Go out there, have an eye opening weekend and I'll catch you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.